Declaration of Independence declares, we hold these truths to be self-evident. All are created equal, and they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights. Although some may doubt whether the Declaration is a constitutional document, the words that invented America define our core constitutional values of equality and freedom. In Lincoln's words, our nation was conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all are created equal. The Constitution itself implicitly reflects those values. Yet, there is always a degree of tension between equality and freedom. For example, equality prohibits discrimination against homosexuals and requires same-sex marriage. But freedom prohibits the proscription of political orthodoxy and requires respect for those who disagree on religious grounds. Similarly, in the context of student sexual assault on a public university campus, equality requires the institution to remedy the sex discrimination against the victim survivor by disciplining the perpetrator. Freedom requires extensive due process protections before the alleged perpetrator can be disciplined. Unfortunately, when confronted with sexual assaults on campus, public institutions frequently have ignored equality. After the decline of the in loco parentis doctrine, universities have tolerated a student life culture that emphasizes heavy drinking and casual sex. Such an environment does not prevent sexual assault and indeed indirectly encourages it. When students did come forward with allegations of sexual assault, campus officials often failed to, one, provide adequate psychological counseling, two, grant accommodations such as changes in class schedule or housing, or three, prevent retaliation by the alleged perpetrator's supporters. If a victim survivor wished to pursue justice against the alleged attacker, the university often simply referred them to the criminal justice system, where police and prosecutors would not pursue ambiguous cases. If the school initiated student disciplinary proceedings, it was often a horrific experience for the victim survivor. Sadly, at some institutions, the alleged perpetrator's status as an athlete or the child of a wealthy donor apparently influenced the decision to pursue discipline or the sanction involved. Given the inadequate responses of institutions to the problems of sexual assault, advocates and policymakers justifiably demand universities do more. Quite simply, public schools have a moral and constitutional obligation to change the culture so that sexual assault is less common, support the victim survivors, and to facilitate the victim survivors' pursuit of justice. Trustees, administrators, and faculty members must do more. Yet while there is a broad consensus that equality requires more, some believe public institutions must choose between equality and freedom. Pursuing justice for the victim survivors requires abandonment or significant diminishment of due process protections. Protecting the rights of the accused student means further trauma for the victim survivor, or worse, a rapist goes free. This is a false choice. There is no clash of constitutional values. The Constitution does not require public institutions to choose between equality and freedom. To the contrary, the Constitution requires a public university to honor both choices. Indeed, preferring equality over freedom, or freedom over equality, is a constitutional violation. The purpose of this article is to demonstrate how a public institution must respect both equality and freedom in the context of a student sexual assault case.